what does it mean to backslide? You know, the Bible has a lot to say about the men of God who run from God, who are not going in the direction that God has uh, called them to go. We see many examples in the Bible. One example is that of Jonah. When God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah pretty much said no and went, and went the opposite way. And if you're familiar with that story, God got him to where he was going to end up anyway, right? We saw that Jonah ended up going to Nineveh, but he took the long route there. <clears throat> a troublesome route inside of a, a great fish. He could have spared himself all that trouble if he would have just obeyed when God called him the first time. And so to you and I, when God calls us to, to, to go and, and follow him, to go and talk to someone about Jesus, to go and, and make a decision, we need to listen to the Lord and not wait, not hesitate, but participate in God's plans uh, for us. Today we're going to look at Jacob. Jacob <clears throat> was another man whom had his time of backsliding as well. Jacob is a picture of a carnal man who is not the first choice from our human standpoint of, of choosing someone. Jacob's name uh, meant uh, heel catcher, but God changed his name to Israel. You see, he was one of the patriarchs of Israel. Israel means God governed. But even after God gave him this new name, Israel, he had his own time of going back to being a Jacob, being a heel catcher, doing his own thing apart from God. And we see that in Genesis chapter 34. In Genesis chapter 34, there is no mention of God. That's a chapter where we don't find God mentioned. And it seems like this is uh, Jacob's uh, years of, detour, of, a de of a long detour before going back to where God was calling him to go. You see, God called Jacob to come back home. He had spent many years at his uncle Laban's house. He got himself a family there. He increased in riches there and in children. And he was on his way back home. There was the incident of, you know, where Jacob wrestles with the angel that night. God reminds him of his new name, Israel. And he tells Esau, that he was his brother, that he was going to catch up to him later on. But he never did. Actually, it took years before he went back to, <clears throat> to the nation, uh, to the place where he needed to go. Excuse me. So Jacob goes to this place called uh, Shechem, this Canaanite city where his daughter is raped, where his sons become murderers, where his household is evidently worshiping idols. That is a place of being backslidden. When we find ourselves being carnal, Though our, our calling is no longer to follow the world, but to follow Jesus. When you are backsliding, you will not mention God in your life. Well, you will not look for God in your life because you don't want that conviction. Because you don't want the, 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 the guilt and the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit uh, pressing on your heart to change, to repent, right? So often what we do is we ignore God in our life when we backslide. And that should not be so. Because see, the Holy Spirit calls you back because the consequences of sin are terrible and sometimes irreversible. So in this place called Shechem, as I mentioned earlier, things got really bad for the family of God here. But it got to the point where finally Jacob made a choice. He knew he needed to go back to the place God had called him. And that's what we see in chapter 35. Chapter 34 of Genesis is a dark chapter, but chapter 35 is where God is calling him back now. Let's start there. It's just a few verses here I want to share with you. Genesis 35 verse 1 says, Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, Bethel means the house of God, and dwell there and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. So he's like, Remember years back where, you know, you, you, you had that dream, you slept on a rock, you were alone running from your brother, and, and then you saw the ladder, right? We call it Jacob's ladder, but the ladder with angels ascending and descending, and then the Lord at the top, 
that God moment where God gave you those promises, I want you to go back to that place is what is happening here. That's what God is telling him. Go back to the place where you first met God. So it says here um, in verse 2, And Jacob said to his household, notice what he does, And to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. That is a picture of repentance. Repentance means to turn around and turn to Jesus. To, to turn away from your sin, to let go of your sin, to do what you need to do to get that grip off of you and, and you grasp onto Jesus once again. So they needed to let go of the foreign gods that were among them and purify themselves and even change their garments here. It says in verse 3, Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Verse 4, So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem. I love that, that, uh, that last uh, verse there, verse 4, because what's happening here is this. Jacob, the head of the household, is taking initiative. He's taking charge. He's saying, look, give me your idols. We're going to bury them. He buries the idols. He doesn't take them with them to the place of God, to the house of God. He doesn't do that. He buries the things that kept them away from God. And so to you and I, we need to look for those things in our lives that, that keep us from God, that keep us in distance from the Lord and bury those things and walk away from those things so we can experience God in a fuller way. So our life with Him can be thriving. So we are not striving with, with, with sin, but we are thriving with God. I pray you do that. If there is something that is holding you back from just being uh, full, full throttle for the Lord, let go of that. Whatever that is, it's not worth it. See, repentance is letting go of the rest so we can grab on to God's best. Repentance is letting go of the rest so we can grab on to the best, right? And what God offers is always best for you and me. There is no competition. Don't allow trivial things, passing things that are only going to keep you in, in, in a distraction mode, entertained. They'll give you entertainment. They'll give you a false sense of, uh, of security. But those are just substitutions for true joy, for true peace, for true comfort that we can only fi find in an active relationship with Jesus Christ. So let go of the rest so you can grab onto God's best. God bless you. Thank you.